Welcome back, Apologia, 8th grade, Physical Science, week 5, day 2, textbook pages 71 through 73, notebook page 62. Basically, this is um, experiment 2.3, changes in matter. Alright, so experiment 2.3, the purpose. The purpose of this experiment is to explore physical and chemical changes in matter. The materials we're going to use are a beaker or a small clear glass. Well, of course, our chemistry kit still did not come in, so we have our glass. Um, we're going to need some baking soda. We have that. There's some tap water already in there. Um, a nine volt battery, two pieces of insulated wire um, with copper. We have a spoon. We'll just use the teaspoon for stirring. And then eye protection, we're set. All right. The question we want to ask ourselves while we're doing this experiment is, what types of clues indicate physical and chemical changes? All right, we sort of learned some of these, so let's just uh, go over these real quick. So some of the indicating um, indications that something has physically changed is an expected color change, a change in the size or the shape, change in the state of matter, and then it is reversible, because remember, we can reverse these physical changes. And then the biggest one for this is that no new substance has formed, which then leads me to what are some of the indications that a chemical change has occurred? A color change, a formation of a precipitate, a formation of a gas, like bubbles, um, there's an odor change or a temperature change. All right, so now that we talked a little bit about that and we've already stated the purpose, let's think about your hypothesis for this. Write what you predict will happen when you add electricity through a copper wire to a solution of baking soda and water. All right, I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna go grab my helper. All right, we're back with my helper. We're ready to get started on the lab. The first step was fill the beaker or the small glass three quarters full of tap water. And basically we just started with that because I had to get some tap water anyway. So it's about three quarters full. Step two, add a teaspoon of baking soda and stir vigorously. Perfect, go ahead and then just stir that up really well. I'll read the next step while he's stirring. We, have, we are making a change to the materials and the procedures, so we're gonna to wanna to take note of that. It recommended that we use scissors to strip the wire. Well, we decided to just go ahead and actually use- Wire strippers. Wire strippers. So, I'm gonna read it while you're stripping the wire. Um, use your scissors to strip about a quarter inch of insulation off both ends of each wire. So if you want to do a quarter inch, that's right, so we have one side done. We're going to start stripping. We have to strip all, um, both sides of both of the wires. So as he's doing that, like I said, it wanted us to use scissors and then cut it, but we had wire strippers. So it just seemed like a good idea to use the wire strippers. All right, so he's working on the second wire. You can see that we have copper about a half an inch a little more than a quarter and this is going to be the last um, end that he needs to strip the insulation off the copper wire all right while he finishing that up i do want to say you got to be careful because you really can hurt yourself doing this there we go. all right now let's put both of our wires down perfect good job once you've stripped the insulation off both ends of each wire, connect the end of one wire to one of the two terminals on the battery. Do this by laying the wire over the terminal and then pressing it down. Secure it to the terminal with a piece of tape. It does not need to look pretty, but the bare wire needs to be solidly touching one terminal and not in contact with the other. We're gonna do this and we'll be right okay, back. So we have the first wire done. Um, step five says to go ahead and repeat step four with the other wire and the other battery terminal. 
Now, we'll go ahead and get that. I'll be right back. Okay, so again, that was step five. Now you have two wires attached to the battery, one at each terminal. Do not allow the bare ends of these wires to touch each other. So we have one way over here, and we have one way over there. So we do not want those two wires to touch. All right. It's saying to immerse the wires, one second, immerse the wires in the baking soda water solution that is in the small glass so that the bare end of each wire is completely submerged. It doesn't really matter how much of the insulated portion of the wire is immersed, just make sure that the entire bare end of the wire is fully submerged. Once again, do not allow the ends to touch each other. Okay, so Jim, go ahead and stick that in there. Oh, oh look at that. What do we see there, Jimmy? Bubbles. That's right. So I am going to make sure if you hold them there, that's great. Ooh, Jimmy, don't let them touch. Okay, Just, yeah, there you go. Keep them on the sides. All right. Look at the bare ends of the wires. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Okay. All right. Immerse the wires in the baking soda. So that was step six. Just, you're getting close to touching. Yeah, there we go. Look at the bare ends of the wires as they're submerged in the baking soda water solution. What do you see? Well, if everything is set up right, you should see bubbles coming from both ends. So we set it up right. We definitely have lots of bubbles going on. All right. So you're probably going to want to, at this point, um, once you get things working, spend some time observing what's going on. Notice that bubbles are forming on both wires. You might want to draw what you see. Maybe the first observation, you should draw and describe how wire one and wire two and the solution looked at the beginning of the exper experiment. And then maybe in about 10 minutes, we're going to draw and describe um, how wire one and wire two and the solution looked at the end of the 10 at the end of 10 minutes. All right. Now we're going to let the experiment run for 10 minutes and we'll be back at that 10 minute mark. Okay, we should be hearing the 10 minute timer from Alexa um, any second. How much longer in the timer? You can see the bubbles are still forming. And there is our 10 minute timer. All right. Let's make some observations. We still see the bubbles um, are forming from both of the exposed wires. We can look down and also see the bubbles. They're definitely forming. And the solution, the I mean, the color change is crazy. It's a baby blue. It's a very pretty um, baby blue color. All right, so at this point, you might wanna draw again and describe um, what you're seeing here. And that would be good to put in your data and observation section in your lab report. All right, so now let's look at step number nine. Um, allow the experiment to run for about 10 minutes. After that time, pull the wires out of the solution and look at the bare ends. Do not touch them together. So go ahead. Okay, so we have one of them. Okay, we have one of them that looks like a copper, but we have one of them that looks like a, a bluey, patina kind of color, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, that sort of does. That's right, so don't touch it. Don't let them touch either. All right, so this would be a good time to draw the, um, and you know, draw what you're seeing. One of the wires is still kind of like a dark copper, and one of them is definitely a pretty bluey patina. All right, step 10. If you let the experiment run for 10 minutes, it's very possible that your solution became slightly colored and ours did. Now, write in your data table whether or not that happened and what color, if any, the solution became, like I said, a pretty baby blue. Looking at the wire that changed color, trace it back to the battery and determine the terminal. Was it the positive 
or the negative that it was attached. Then we're gonna write that in our laboratory notebook as well. So I'm not gonna give away all the clues, but we're gonna to wanna to trace this Bettina one back to figure out was it connected to the positive terminal or to the negative terminal. Jimmy, if you'd like to remove, yeah, well. we can do that. And then you can just remove one at a time so you know which one it oh, was. Okay. The Bettina one has it right there. Okay, plus, the, Bettina, cop, the Bettina one is connected to the positive side. All right. Now, uh, step 12, clean, clean up. Disconnect the wires from the battery, dump the solution down the sink, run tap water to flush it down the drain and wash the glass thoroughly. What I wanna do is talk about the results a little bit. When the ends of the wire were put into the glass, bubbles formed on the wires. The bubbles formed on both of the wires. After 10 minutes, the wire hooked to the positive end of the battery turned blue-green. In fact, the whole solution in the glass had a faint blue-green tint to it. The wire hooked to the negative end of the battery did not turn colors at all. It was just a copper color. All right, in this experiment, the two wires were hooked up to the two sides of a battery. When those wires were put in a solution of baking soda and water, bubbles formed on the wires. As time went on, the wire hooked to the positive side of the battery turned a blue-green color. Eventually, the entire solution turned this blue-green. The wire hooked to the negative side of the battery did not turn colors. Two things went on during this experiment which caused these results. First, the electricity from the battery broke water molecules down into their constituent atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. The bubbles were the hydrogen and the oxygen forming. The other thing that happened was the formation of the blue-green color, that patina color. That happened because copper atoms in the wire were linking up with oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen atoms in the solution to form copper hydroxycarbonate, which is the same stuff that turned copper statues like the Statue of Liberty green. So how cool is that? I hope you guys have enjoyed this lab. I know I did.